say the least, eventful for Benetton, the season is now drawing to a close. For the team, it will be the last time together before the winter break. Come get out. This season's been a, a sort of emotional roller coaster. I still have to split the money with you, Mr. Oh, Contador. Oh. <laughs> so it was up and down, but as a balance, I would like not to remember it. We start in the season with uh, very confident to be to fight for the championship. Didn't happen, but that's racing. The team's high point of the season at the British Grand Prix in July was surpassed later that month with a victory for Gerhard Berger against the odds in Germany. For Berger, the result was extra special as he'd come back from a sinus problem and his father's sudden death to win Benetton's first Grand Prix since the departure of Michael Schumacher. victory. I couldn't be happier. Formula One couldn't be happier. Benetton could not be happier. Rio could not be happier. And I'm quite sure that Gerhard Berger could. He didn't just win, he dominated. He had pole position, he had fastest lap, he led nearly all the race and he won it. You, know, you couldn't ask for more than that, it was a fairy tale. In Hockenheim, you, uh, it was an extra motivation even to show the people that you can do it under circumstances like this. Ironically, a rejuvenated Berger announced that he'd be leaving Benetton at the end of the season. Giancarlo Fisichella is spotted hanging out with the Benetton team, but he claims he's just there for the famous Benetton pasta. Once again, when everyone expects the worst of Benetton, they dumbfound the critics by picking up pole position in Italy. In only the second pole of his career, Alessi led for most of the race, and only a slow lap coming into the pits meant he had to settle for second. McLaren won, and we're now hot on Benetton's heels in the Constructors' Championship. It was a fantastic race, uh, starting on the position and uh, finishing, unfortunately, second, but um, having the, the non-stop pushing race from uh, the first uh, lap to the last one, I was really flat out, which is uh, exactly what we are looking for. Alessi, like Berger, followed up his success with the shock news that he'll be on his way out at the end of the season. We drive for uh, Sauber. I sent for Sauber for two years. With Alessi and Berger on the way, Benetton had to take Jordan to court to reclaim Fisichella. They win the case and quickly announce that Fisichella will be joined by test driver Alex Wirtz as the new, younger and cheaper package for 1998. At the Luxembourg Grand Prix, Alessi and Berger proved not to be the last two names to depart from Benetton. After much speculation, the team announces that Flavio Briatore will be leaving after the race and his replacement will be David Richards of Rally Team Pro Drive, much to the surprise of the waiting media. This is the last race in Benetton. It's the last time I'm in Benetton with this uh, Benetton uniform. And uh, like I said before, it's the last day of school, you know. You're ready for going vacation and it's the best day. I got out this morning and I uh, sort of put on my new school uniform and it's like my first day in a new school. But uh, I think for a little while I just have to sit at the back of the class and just watch and learn and listen for a while. Yeah, I'll just follow you around and listen to your time. The way I go about things is I tend to sort of work with groups of people, I tend to build up teams. I'm, I'm not looking to create any sort of uh, uh, personality cults within the team. But while the new king is crowned, the input of the former boss is still much appreciated. He'll become, he'll, he'll become part of Formula One folklore. You know, he, he, is, he is a bit of a legend. Perhaps, perhaps a new style, a different style of management is required. Um, Flavio did the most remarkable job, and he'll be sorely missed because you know he is a character. He's got huge presence, um, and he's very, very good at closing the deal. Now there will be a slightly different style of management. Any business must must grow. Uh, eight years is long time in this uh, business, and uh, is enough. It's the time to change, but uh, I'm very happy 
for what I done. I'm very happy about what the team has done, and I'm very happy because I'm sure in the future the team is strong. The race was to be another high point in the Benetton season, as Alessi finished second and Berger fourth, putting them clear of McLaren again, with third in the Constructors' Championship. Well, we've got to maximise our position now. We've obviously got to stay ahead. McLaren are, uh, are chasing hard behind us now. Clearly, nothing we can do about uh, Ferrari and Williams at the front, but uh, I think we've every reason to think we can maintain our third place. One week before the last race of the season, the cars are backed into the truck for the final trip across Europe this year. This is 1,630 miles from the circuit to the factory. We'll spread it over two well, three days. I mean, Portugal's the furthest. This must be the second, and then uh, Hungary. It sounds a bit odd, but I spent more time sharing a room with Trev than I actually do with my own wife. I'm really looking forward to the end of the season. Uh, it's it's just knowing that you've got one more race to get out of the way, and that's it. You know, it's, it's over. You look forward to a bit of time with the family at home, get away on holiday, and hopefully a good drink after. You know, after the race as well, good party. I think we've secured third place. I think we go here, McLaren's got to finish 1-2, and we haven't got the score. I mean, I think it's very close, but apart from that, I think we're pretty safe. Early morning press interest at the track is not only for title contenders Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve, but also surrounds Gerhard Berger, as this will now be his last Grand Prix. I retired, I always know I retired when I feel that they retire. And that's exactly what I feel, I feel tired and I want to retire. Definitely Gerhard is a, is a very special driver. Uh, he's been around for a long time, uh, he's been in all the top teams. Uh, today it's getting hard to find that kind of animal. You know, Gerhard is, uh, he is an enigma in modern motor racing. Uh, he does have a great sense of fun, and that's something that is missing in most drivers these days. But at the same time, great professionalism. When anyone stops in any sport, you know, so you'll remember the great moments of a sportsman and you'll look back on the great times. I think true sportsmen, true real great sportsmen, understand when the time is to stop. They lose that passion, that enthusiasm, and I think that's, that's fundamentally what's happened to Gerhardt. I, I don't think he's any slower than he used to be, but uh, he can obviously have a great turn of speed, as he showed in Germany earlier this year. But it really it needs more than that. You need to wake up in the morning wanting to do it. And if you don't feel that, then that's the time to say, I've had enough. But the departure of Berger and Alessi doesn't bring total remorse from within the Benetton camp as they look forward to the two new drivers. To appreciate the relationship that I have uh, developed uh, with these two drivers and, uh, and hope uh, one, on, one way or the other we keep on being linked in the future. Um, I think they, they have done their duties. They have done their duties uh, sometimes well, sometimes... Uh, Less well. You have to be careful on Sunday, Gal, because we can give you a lot of shit on Sunday. Okay. We can. Yeah, I can give you more shit than you can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been all year, so I don't suppose it's make any difference. It's no secret, we've struggled a little bit controlling these drivers. Um, their great experience means they tend to be set in certain ways, but I think the excitement we have is moulding these two new talents. A driver, if he's a good driver, he doesn't want to be moulded into anything. He wants to adapt uh, to whatever situations uh, and, and take out the best of uh, the possibilities that the car is offering him. Um, I think that uh, with the, the choices that we have seen inside the team lately, we have just confirmed uh, a very basic uh, element of the Benetton philosophy, which is we like to invest into young people, we like to see uh, young talents uh, emerging, and we think we got a very two good ones with Physical and, and Alexander Wood. Despite this being Alessi's last race for Benetton, he still has the incentive of a possible third place in the Drivers' Championship as qualifying practice begins.
However, unless his over-exuberance is shown when he has a hefty crash in practice. to work quickly to get the third car ready with less than an hour to qualifying time. A sheepish Alessi returns to the pits to face the music and his new boss. What do you think about the top? Is it okay? The top wishbone certainly hasn't gone in. The low one is not showable. The T-car's set up is on anyway. Okay, that's all right. Good. It'd be nice to see the race car. Alessi goes out for qualifying in the spare car as the race car is unsalvageable. But there are more problems in store for the frantic Frenchman. John Alacy out now. He crashed his car very badly this morning, went into the wall very hard indeed. It's completely ripped it off. He's had to have the spare car settings adjusted for him. But he was quick this morning. He was third fastest, only a couple of tenths off the pace. He actually slipped out to the end of his spare again. He goes again. Is he a lucky man? John Alacy, if he'd bogged down in trap there, he would have been one of the most unpopular men in the world in the Benetton team. Very lucky there. Lost everything. I have no brakes on this car. Because I have a very important... The throttle map is completely different. <laughs> Let's keep John on the track for a start. Honestly, I, I don't know what is really happening because it, it's too much the way the guy is reacting. Uh. Burger, meanwhile, is picking his time carefully before going out. Christian, there's very little traffic around at the moment. Could be a good time rather than waiting right till the end. No, I don't want to go. You, you would make a block? No. Okay. When Berger eventually gets out onto the track, he's looking good. Well, at the present moment, Gerhard Berger is in seventh place. We're riding with the Benetton now. That is, until a lacy tries to overtake him. Gerhard, John will be on the flying lap as you're on your outlap. Gerhard, John, please behind you. Please let through. Gerhard doesn't pull over and forces a lacy offline. Just I want to know something. I was swimming behind him. Yes, John, I told him. Mr. Warning, John said Gerhard blocked him on his lap, so he blocked him on the way back no, in. You are joking. No. What? They're like kids. Oh, stop, stop. Sid, what are they doing? The dogfight between the two Benetton drivers is secondary to the real battle taking place between Schumacher and Villeneuve. Amazingly, as the session ends, they both finish on pole with exactly the same timing. Berger ends up eighth on the grid and Alacy tenth. I've never ever seen that before. No, three. And the two, Schumacher and Villeneuve, equal. Pretty pissed off with our two guys, though. They block each other like that. It's pathetic. It really is pathetic. Sorry, I that's the last time they drive one of our cars. I get the feeling we're a bit of a sideshow this weekend in the Schumacher versus Villeneuve battle, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? That's the great appeal about motor racing. The colours of the crowds arriving on race day morning reflect the fact that today really is about Williams and Ferrari and not Benetton. With Villeneuve and Schumacher one point apart, everything rests on today's race. However, the knock-on effect for Benetton does lead to a relaxed atmosphere in the garage and a jovial Gerhard Berger preparing for his last ever Formula One race. Can you hear me okay, Gerhard? I hope really that's the last time that I can hear you okay. Thank you, Gerhard. Let's have some concentration now. Yeah, it's pretty about the good position because the car should be pretty good today. Oh, well, next year's a new year. Yeah. Two enthusiastic 
hard charging young drivers. Yeah. Have a good ride, Cal, and enjoy it. It's the right moment to say thank you to the older boys. I think you're all on the radio. And uh, I want to say thank you for the two years. Let's hope it's going to be on a good race. At the start, German Michael Schumacher takes a flying early lead over Villeneuve. Unbelievable! What a start! Is that French in the second? Where are we? No, we're there. We're okay. We're okay. We're fifth, aren't we? Away like a rabbit. Schumacher pulls away from Vilner, needing only to stay ahead to secure the championship. The Benettons, meanwhile, are having mixed fortunes. Elacey's back in 11th, but Berger has climbed to 7th, just behind the leading pack, where a sensational twist is about to take place. Oh, oh yes! Oh, Michael Schumacher out! And if Vilner can just keep going in the points, he's won the World Championship of 1997. He's off! Hello. What a nasty bastard, Michael. With Schumacher out, Berger now moves up to six. But as the Benetton crew prepare for his pit stop, they're about to get a nasty shot. Heinz Harold Franzen mistakes their pit for the Williams pit, plows through, and flying debris leads to some minor injuries, moments before Berger's arrival. I show him what the hell was the crap up to. Six point six. Very good. Good luck. Where did he come out? He's yet? in free. He's in open space. He's behind it. free air. Yeah. The stop allows Berger to jump up a place to fifth. The Lacey, meanwhile, is well out of contention in twelfth, and his engineers are finding unusual competition. Jumps my question zero. <laughs> Ahead of Berger, meanwhile, deals are being made off the track by the two British constructors, McLaren and Williams, to ensure the result to suit everyone on the track. The theory goes that Villeneuve will get enough points to claim the World Championship, but McLaren's Mika Hakkinen will get his first Formula One race win. The deal between Williams and McLaren, nobody else, because you'll let them through. You'll have to. I bring off the post for us in the championship. Villeneuve won't move over to Coulthard, but he will for Hakkinen. But behind the deals, Berger is not giving up in his final race. Approaching Eddie Irving from fourth, he makes his last Formula One overtaking manoeuvre. Yeah. Oh, he's through! He's through! Hey! Great! Look at this, look how close they are now. He's giving it death now, it's Hackenham. The off-track deals have been radioed to the drivers and are coming to fruition. Hackenham is going to win! Hackenham is going to win his first Grand Prix in his long and meritorious career. He's coming up to the last corner. Hackenham is going to win the European Grand Prix. David Coulthard goes second. Berger finishes one tenth of a second behind Villeneuve, and the team celebrates a fine swan song to his career. Yeah, well done, a brilliant race. Yeah, that was absolutely superb. Best race for ages. Well done. Slings and arrows of outrageous. Well done, eh? Good job. Yeah. Ah, here's Gerhard. Great drive. What a fantastic yeah. drive. Not enough. Oh, it was brilliant. But yeah, but what a manoeuvre at the end. It's actually fantastic. <laughs> brilliant drive. I think with Gerhard, everyone was really willing him all the way. He drove so well anyway. If you look, the tactics were very good as well in terms of the position we were on the track most of the time there. Gerhard really drove superbly. It looked like he was going to be locked behind Irvine right to the finish, but he just made a wonderful manoeuvre just to get that uh, final lap there, and uh, I think everyone just feels for him. After finishing 13th in his last race for Benetton, 
Burgess teammate and Lacey, it's now time to reflect on a future elsewhere. In my situation, I need uh, stimulation, and um, I'm really happy about the deal uh, I made with uh, with Sauber. I'm I'm really looking for a new uh, a new life now in Formula One. For Gerhard Berger, it's a last chance to say goodbye, not only to the team, but to the sport he's been associated with for 13 years. Thank you. I'm not going to miss anyone because I'm going to try to see them if I miss them. So I won't have a relationship with some people, but uh, uh, no, it's, it's too long, too long period for my life doing this that you cut it completely. It's not going to be cut completely. With the packing up underway, it's time for the rest of the team to consider their future. This is uh, 17 years now I've been doing this, and uh, I can't keep going forever. I don't want to keep going forever, but uh, we'll just see every year, each year. If it's good, yeah, yeah, maybe do some more, maybe not, I don't know. It's 60-40 uh, at the moment in favour of. I'm going to take the other way though. Don't have to pack that either. <laughs> for others in the team, the plans are being laid for a winter break. For uh, everybody who the race team, uh, the last race means uh, it's time to go for all This uh, season doesn't really stop. It's a 24 hour day, it's a sort of seven day week, and it's a 12 month season for us. But uh, as it happens, I'm having five days away of half term with the children next week. They're looking for the best beach, and we're looking for the best boardroom the end of the season on the racetrack, but it's actually the start of the season and the sponsorship seeking uh, and the renewal of contracts. So what we have to do now is we actually have to go to visit companies to talk about renewing the sponsorship or, or do they want to sponsor us again? And for those in charge, it's finally a time to take stock and be optimistic. I think we've got all the parts in place now for a very exciting year next year. Uh, we've got two of the most exciting drivers in Formula One. Um, we've got uh, new management within the team who I think are going to take us in a, in a different direction. And uh, you know, I'm working very hard on building the best possible car that I can for next year. And I think it's really exciting and I, I, yeah, I feel very positive about it. Of course, um, after a couple of years of uh, being more competitive than what we've been this year, uh, we, could, uh, we could have a a negative feeling for a moment about this season for coming in third. In reality, I'm extremely satisfied, so moderately happy for the season, but extremely positive for next season, at least I hope. I really believe that my role is an evolutionary role, not a revolutionary role. I want to bring in some sort of, obviously, I'll have my own style of doing things and some perhaps more people-orientated uh, business practices that I want to bring into the team. But I think they're inherently there already, and I think perhaps people just haven't been allowed to do those things in the past. I'm going to remember the highs, and I'm going to, re I'm going to remember very well the lows. And uh, I'm going to try to use that as experience to avoid any more lows in the team. I think we're at the start of a very exciting era that will see Benetton right back at the top, and I mean right at the top.